Okay, it's um, I think time to listen to the second part of Frederic de Gliese's lectures on motivic homotopy theory and categories of, of motives. Um, please go ahead. Thanks. Thanks, Oliver. So, <clears throat> so uh, we, we will we will resume to from the lecture we, we where we have left and and but but uh, maybe I'll, I'll start by giving more uh, a more focused uh, uh, or more precise uh, description of the end of my diagram uh, uh, when when I started my introduction. So we are we were at the Bellinson conjectures in so I date them to 1984. It's published in. 86 actually uh, uh, and, and it's not only about existence of motivic complexes but also of mixed motives and so on <clears throat> so i should add so we have seen now that uh, almost at the same times block introduced these higher trope groups that we have seen in matthew's talk Oops. okay so block in 86. Okay, so this was very, very connected. And, and uh, uh, in the 90s, maybe I'm, I'm not so precise. So there were several uh, uh, consequences of this uh, higher true groups, one by Anna Moura and one by Mark, of a good definition of, of motives over fields with. with some of the expected properties, which derive from uh, higher true groups. Uh, let's recall we had this background, pure motives by Grothendieck above. So I just put G because, okay. <laughs> it is the grandfather of everything. And, and uh, there was also at that time, these Voivodsky motifs that we have started to see, to, which are, I, I think I have, I, I, I try to show you because of this smooth, uh, this category of smooth correspondences, which is close in, in spirit with, with uh, 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 pure motifs and which also were trying to, to answer this question. And, and finally, there, there was a connection that was uh, there's a comparison between these motifs that, that, that was uh, uh, proved by, so some of them were proved by, by Mark, but, but uh, I think Ivora gave the uh, most complete answers. Okay, but I want to say that today I, I'll try to go to the, the homotopy setting and what was exciting about the, this idea of, of, of Iveski was that he most, uh, maybe since the beginning, he include this theory into the homotopical framework. So now we, we call, we know this as morel uh, uh A1 homotopy category. Okay. And uh, uh, with this new idea, uh, 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 a new uh, wall, new world of, of uh, Possibility uh, appear because uh, uh, all the techniques, all the techniques from algebraic topology and, and uh, phenomena from algebraic topology were trans transportable to A1 homotopy, and that's what we have seen in, in Kirsten talk. So, for today, I'll try to present mostly A1 homotopy theory, but I'll try also to to give you a, a presentation of, of uh, motivic complexes of Vygotsky in the same time. Okay, so now we will try to go into definition, uh, uh, especially for motivic complexes and for A1 homotopy. So I'll give definition in a, in a, in a language of infinity categories because it 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 uh, allows me to give you precise definition without giving too many technical details. So infinity categories. So I have. I will use two infinity categories. The first one is the category of spaces, pointed spaces. 
And I'm not against models, so you can you can see them as uh, simply show sets. Okay, and the other one is the infinity derived category of abelian groups. So I, I write curly D to, to indicate that I'm working with infinity categories, but it's, it's sometimes not so important. Abelian groups, okay. And uh, the advantage of the infinity categorical language is that you can present uh, 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 definition is in, in, uh, with, in very shortly and very concretely. Okay, so let me draw a line and I will define both uh, uh, unstable A1 homotopy category. Category, so pointed, I, I, I've taken this uh, pointed. And maybe I should have said that S is now any Noetherian scheme, any scheme. So there are some finiteness condition, but not much. Okay. And in the same times, I will define the effective uh, or just motivic complexes. And you will see that the definitions are, are very close. So this is the DM effective of S, so maybe now S is regular if you, but uh, it's it's actually not necessary in the theory if you are more clever with finite correspondence. So here we, you are just looking to infinity functors. Let me say it like that, from the category of smooth schemes over S to the category of pointed spaces, okay. And you will look only at objects which satisfies two properties. So the first one is excision, which I will formulate like that for any excisive morphism. So let's say F from YT to C. Excisive, so if you remember, it means uh, F from Y to X is etal and the, uh, uh, the inverse image from or, or, uh, and T is the inverse image of, of, of Z and it's an isomorphism, above F is an isomorphism. Then the map, so I write it like this from XC is an isomorphism. So it's a kind of supported uh, um, sections. I, I will give a definition afterwards. And the other property is the A1 homotopy property which says that for all X in smooth schemes, the map induced by the projection. When I say ISO, I should say weak equivalent, sorry. But well, in infinity categories, you say, you say ISO for weak equivalences. Okay, and now here I look at almost the same, maybe I change the letters, but now I take this category of finite correspondences and I go to the hub. You could add if you want that uh, these functors are, are additive in the infinity categorical sense. It means that it commutes with product, but it's, it's not necessary. And you add the same uh, excision same same axiom, so you just replace x by k and a one homotopy. Okay, so very fast definition, which tells you exactly that the, the basic axiom that you want are this excision and a one homotopy property. Maybe just a remark. So uh, first of all, x x z is the homotopy fiber of the natural map from x, x to x, x minus z. Similarly, for when you have a complex, you take you can take the cone, but no, it's just the homotopy fiber. This, this is why I, I take pointed spaces. Maybe a, a remark is that a more, <coughs> more convenient things to, you can replace 
one by asking that uh, for any Nisnevich distinguished, distinguished square, delta, then uh, say x of delta, the homotopy coherent diagram induced by, by, by delta after applying x is, is homotopy Cartesian. So I like this excision formulation because it, 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 makes it, it makes it very close to what we know in topology. But uh, if you use this definition, you can, uh, you can forget about, about base points, okay? So the example that you can get are the following. First, you can take K appointed simply short scheme, set, sorry, simply short set. And you can look at the constant, uh, uh, constant functor, okay, constant, which say to x maps in some, let, let me put some racket, just k itself, okay. Uh, okay, uh, you would like to, to, if you, x is a smooth scheme, you would like that the functor, you would like to have a Yoneda embedding Okay, you would like that the, just the, you take the sheaf of set represented by X, then you would like that it's an object like that. But, or even if you take this in the infinity categorical sense, it will not be the case because this excision and A1 homotopy property will not be true. Uh, same here. So you could take, so to anticipate, you can, as an example, you can, you can take GM and, and it will work. But uh, uh, you, you won't have, if you want to, there is a problem if you want to take what I call the shift with transfers represented by X. Okay, this will not work as, as it is because you need a, a, an intermediate theory. So uh, to be able to work with this, you, you need to <clears throat> slightly more information. And okay, uh, sorry. Ah, I have a problem with Zoom. Ah, okay. Okay, now I, had, I can add a, a new page. So uh, um, actually what, I, what you need to do in order to have this, this object X, what you will want to do for a smooth scheme over S as an object of a category is that you want to use the, the uh, infinity category call localization theory. And for saying it shortly, you want to describe uh, uh, H, you want to describe your category. So HA1 as localization of a category of simply short pre -shift. So let me say in the infinity categorical sense for SMS to pointed space by, uh, uh, so, let me say Nisnevich topology, um, A1, uh, A1, A1 equivalences, which means, which means here uh, uh, the map C transfer S A1 of X. Okay, and here, same thing, instead that you, you look at pre-sheaves with transfers from, or pre-sheaves on SM core S, going to D ab, which is the same thing as the DRAF category, infinity DRAF category, this category. Miznevich. Okay, and what I describe in the in the so in the in the notion in the theory of localization, uh, uh, because these categories are presentable, 
you can always invert sets of map. So here, this is connected with the infinity topos theory. I won't enter into the details, but you invert certain the say Nisnevich hypercoloring for simplif simplification. And here you just invert this map. But when you do that, you can you can al always describe the object as uh, uh, as certain local objects inside this category here. And this is what I've described here. Okay. But when you 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 just uh, uh, decide to invert maps in this category, now you can just uh, you can just consider your any example. So if now X is any any smooth scheme, you can look at its pre-sheaf and then uh, uh, localize it with respect to this uh, this this map here. And same thing here. Okay, so just to say that. Uh, there is this localization theory, which is hidden here. But now I want to give a concrete definition, which is what we, we use in practice, which is the, the original definition of, uh, of Moran and Wojewski, and, and which using, it's in some sense, it's hide, it hides some, some localization here. So you can define the, the A1 homotopy category as the localization. This time you don't take pre-sheaves, but you take uh, sheaves for the Nisnevich topology, S and S uh, of simplicial groups. So as a model, you can just take functors from S and S. Now these, these are I'm mixing things, right? I'm now take, uh, you, looking at models, but you can just take simply show sheaves like this. These are called spaces, pointed, okay. With respect, and now because you, are, you have taken these, these, this category of sheaves, you have to localize only with respect to A1, with respect to A1, so which means you just invert so the map. Uh, ah, sorry. A1, A1x, where you add a base point, x plus. So, sorry, here also I should have put this. Uh, transfers is for the right side. Okay, and here you take the category of shift with transfers that I have introduced and uh, uh, localized with respect to these uh, maps. Okay, uh, this is my TM effective S with integral coefficients. But okay, uh, as I said before, there is uh, always a, 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 a notion of A1 local object and A1 localization. So here, the A1 local object may be. or the complex of sheaves with transfers. So let me write this. Such that uh, for all X over S smooth, the cohomology of, of uh, with coefficient, Nisnevich cohomology of X uh, uh, with coefficient in K is homotopy invariant. So that's what we have this. is an isomorphism. Okay. Here I have a similar description for a one local object. I have to take uh, uh, mapping spaces, but okay. okay. Um, 
Uh, in any case, in this uh, abstract infinity categorical world, uh, 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 language, or you can also use model categories, there is a, a kind of, if there is a functor abstractly, which A1 localized uh, uh, object and which, which gives you object of this form here. Uh, but the problem is to in 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 uh, the problem in all this theory is to describe this a1 localization functor. So now I want to explain a bit more this in the case of shift with transfers, and now we restrict to the case where k is a perfect field. So you, you can notice that I have slowly passed from the infinity categorical language to that of a model and model category, but it's it. Uh, I mean, I think we should be smooth about this uh, passing from one language to another. In any case, if you consider now a complex of sheaves with transfers, so let's say. You can, I recall that you can always define its cohomology. Okay, so we have this, this map here. And then this one, you can define its cohomology sheaves, H I K, as you just take kernel as usual, dn plus one module image, and this is computed in the in the category of shifts with transfer. So I have briefly said that it's an abelian category. So you can do that. Actually, it's it's uh, well, okay. It's almost like you take the cohomology uh, stupidly as pre-shifts and then you take the associated associated chief and the theorem of it tells you that it will admit transfer. So this leaves in the category of shifts with transfers. And then you can translate the main theorem of Wojewski as follows. We have that K as above is A1 local if and only if for all integer is cohomology pre sheaves are A1 invariant. Meaning they belong in this category, but H I T R of K. Okay, and so actually this is a this is a formal consequence of the fact that if you take an object which is a one invariant, a face shift with transfers which is a one invariant, then its cohomology is a one invariant. So it's just uh, it just follow from the main theorem of Wojcicki, and you definitely need that K is perfect here. Okay, so. <clears throat> Actually, maybe, so maybe I, just to be a bit more clear, Wojewski defined the category of motivic complexes now maybe as a triangulated category of a K as a full subcategory of D, the category of derived sheaves, of, of the derived category of sheaves with transfer made by Whose A1 local complexes. Okay, but this is just uh, what you will get from the localization theory. The, the important part is that you can describe this A1 local object. Okay. And uh, the bonus is that you, you have now. Uh, following construction, which is the Susin complex construction, which is very important and which will give you, which will give you a way to compute in this uh, strange category a priori. So we have seen that the delta, delta n, the simply show scheme, spec over k, k t0, tn mod, in the talk of Matthew, and it has a simply show structure. Okay, and now you can just if you have a, a shift with transfers, a complex of shifts with transfers. Sorry, you can define the Susin complex of K just by 
associating to x over s over k sorry smooth you take the total complex for direct sum of the double complex that you will get by applying k to delta dot cross kx okay so here you have a simply show scheme you apply a contravariant functor so you will get a, a a co-simplicial object, so a co-simplicial complex, you turn it into a B, a bi-complex, and you take the total total space. Okay. <clears throat> and a corollary of the previous theorem is that uh, for any k as above, a complex C star S of K is A1 local. And the canonical map, so you have a canonical map like that, system S goes to K is an A1 weak equivalence, so an isomorphism in this category DM T of K. Okay, so now examples. So first one, if X over K is smooth. You can define the Wojewski motifs. M of X, it will be the complex C star Suslin of uh, this shift Z transfer over K. So the shift with transfer represented by X over K. So over a definition, you can define the tet twist Z1 as the, so let me take the reduced motive of P1 pointed by infinity. So to insist that it's really close to what we have seen for us P1, P1 seen as a sphere, but you shift this by minus two. So Wojewski motives M of X are, you have to thought about them as a, as the singular homology of a, a space X. Uh, and so when you compute the homology of P1, it will be in two degrees, say for singular homology, degree zero and two, and the twist here correspond to the, what appear in homological degree two, okay? And it will be isomorphic to the reduced motive of GM pointed by one shifted minus one because these two spheres are equivalent from the A1 homotopical point of view. Okay. <clears throat> then I can define that twist Zn as just so I've not I've not given detail here, but you can define a tensor product on this category of complexes. Tensor product is, is such that mx tensor m1. I think someone has, has left his uh, mic open. Okay. Okay, so these are these are definitions, these are the definition of the twist. The, the thing is that uh, with what we have said, you can compute some part of this, this object. So first of all, uh, the motive of GM, so seen as this complex, uh, uh, will be isomorphic to mm, the sum of a constant shift plus the shift GM that we have seen so in particular, it's in degree zero for, or seen as an object in, uh, in the derived category of shifts with transfers over K. So that follows from Susan Vyvesky's computation. So this implies by definition that Z1 is just the shift GM placed in cohomological degree one, okay? So it belongs in zero one. Uh, uh, with respect to the T structure here. Okay. Uh, moreover, you can show that CN, so it's reduced motive of GM pointed by one 
smash n. So let's say it's a direct factor of a motif of gm, uh, sorry, there is a minus n here, gm times n, shift minus n. So by definition of this Hussein complex, it's in cohomological degree, so maybe minus infinity n as a complex of shifts with transfers. Okay, so we have seen this, uh, now I can reformulate a Bayin Sensule, that uh, conjecture that we have seen tells you that for n strictly positive, Cn should be in 1n for uh, this, this uh, in, inside the category of uh, the dual category shifts with transfer. Okay, I'm slightly more precise than Matthew here. Matthew said zero n, but uh, it's conjecture that actually it's in one n. We have not much, but be just because of, based on the z1 case. Okay. And just a word, this, this conjecture is equivalent to say, so if you want to try to prove that for E over K, a function field of a variety, the complex that you obtain, so I just, I'm just taking the definition of finite correspondences from del, over E from delta dot E to GM to the N is, uh, sorry, has no uh, homology in degree bigger or equal to n. Okay. So the Bellinson Soule conjecture is, is actually uh, equivalent to that. And as, as Ben has, has already indicated, it's sufficient to do this with rational coefficients. So, so now it's, you see these, these finite correspondences are, this is very explicit, almost combinatorial, but still nobody has succeeded to do that. For in case n equal one, you can, you can, uh, you can work with it because these, these cycles will reduce to divisors. And then you can use the, the trick of Susin and Vygotsky to reduce to Picard group and, and that works. But otherwise uh, there's no, nothing to do at the moment. But I leave it to you now. Okay, so maybe I, I, I go now with Motivic Komoji just to connect with Matthew's talk. So we have these complexes, recall Cn complexes of sheaves with transfers over S, over K, sorry. And then we define H i comma n in the A1 homotopical notation motivic, motivic homogy degree, uh, sorry, maybe, sorry, I invert H n i of some smooth scheme here, x over k smooth as the cohomology for Zaisky or Niznevich, it's the same of x with coefficient in these complexes. So it's not exactly the same definition than that of blocks higher group, but it's also morphism in dm effective of k of m of x, z, uh, sorry, z i shift n. So And is the degree and I the twist? Okay. So we have, uh, from this point of view, so there is a comparison of this definition due to Wojewski uh, uh, with higher truck groups for in this generality. So we have also all the computation that. Uh, uh, that Matthew has given, but I, I should say a last last computation, which is due to Susin and Vyoski, we have seen that. Uh, so I said that Zn is in degree minus infinity n, and we can still compute its nth homology sheaf. And this is the so-called unramified Milner K theory. 
and this comes from uh, what I said in the previous talk. So it's also, if you want, uh, I denoted that S and T, but it's GM tensor in the category of sheaves with uh, of homotopy invariant sheaves n times. Okay. All these sheaves that appear live in this category H I T of K. This is why it's it's uh, motivic in nature and it's very important. Okay. No more questions. So now I, I'm I'm going back to A1 A1 homotopy, and uh, uh, I want to indicate the, the the development on the six functor formalism. So uh, we double we, we first see a, a a glimpse of the six operation on H on the unstable homotopy category. H star A1, so pointed. And now we go back to some scheme S and the Noetherian finite dimensional. So I, I want to insist on the fact that the first description I, I gave in terms of infinity category allows you to construct the so called basic six operation, maybe. Uh, let's, let's start with, if you recall, we have a morphism F from T to S. Suppose we have let's let's go back to an infinity functor like this S star. Then uh, so this is a space in the infinity categorical sense. Okay. Then I can just look at something like X composed with F upper star. So if I have a smooth scheme over S, so I define this base change for for correspondences, but it of course it works for smooth schemes. Just recall, it's just a base change, and then I, I compose with my functor here. Okay. So this is a well-defined functor, and you can check that it it satisfies uh, the, the excision if x uh, satisfies excision, and uh, so let's say shortly it lives in this. Category so it's local for Nisnevich and A1 uh, and, and A1 homotopy. Then you can check that this is also it satisfies also excision plus A1 homotopy on the nodes. Okay, so it directly gives you an object in H A1. This object we denote it F lower star of X. So that uh, easily we have obtained a functor from here to yes. Okay, this is a direct image functor. It's like for sheaves. Defining f lower star is 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 easy. But now because I'm I'm working with presentable infinity category, I have a, an adjoint functor theorem, which will say that there exists f upper star, the right infinity functors, which exists formally. Okay, so this gives me two operations. If I repeat this with from a morphism from T to S, which is smooth, then I will get two functors. So I get the best change if I repeat this operation. So you have to prove this. And here I get this operation that I've de denoted by P sharp, which in some sense forget the base. And the two other operations are a bit hidden. So we are uh, the fact that H star A1 of T is a monoidal infinity category. So which means that there is a smash product and internal um, okay so maybe all these operations so as i said the right adjoints are easy to define even for the ohm internal arm, but the left adjoints are characterized by their properties. So maybe I should. The left adjoints, sorry, are characterized by properties like f upper star, or if you take a, point, a pointed simplicial schemes and 
you apply this to this object if x of s is smooth. Okay, so say that this exists by the localization property, then you just have you just obtain k slash x cross s t plus and so on for the object v of object. Okay, this characterizes the, 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 the these basic six operations. Okay, we have also some formal property that I let uh, to you. There are the so called smooth uh, base change formula and smooth projection formula. For lack of time, I won't, I won't say. But these are formal. Everything of, of this is formal. One thing which is not formal, we try with state now, is the um, so called Morel Vyvetsky localization theorem. Says the following: Take any closed immersion from Z to S. Closed immersion uh, U is op open complement and U let G J B. It's the uh, open immersion. Then for any pointed space H U of S. The following uh, sequence j upper star j lower star of x goes to x goes to y lower star or upper star of x is a homotopy fiber sequence. Frederick, can I ask a question at this point? Yeah. Is this uh, does this rely essentially on the Nesnevich uh, localization? Does it? Is Actually, not. It, it, no. it really relies on it really rely on Nesnevich and A1 homotopy. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't work for the um, so risky. Ah, oh, that's right. Absolutely, that's right. It works yeah. for the etal, but not for Zeiss. So that's right. Absolutely. So it, it yeah, you really use the Nisnevich on A1, and this is one of the reasons why the Nisnevich topology was a good choice. It also works for the etal topology, but the etal uh, is uh, somewhat st too strong for some other uh, perspective, like quadratic forms, because quadratic forms are trivial etal locally. So maybe I can, so the, the, this proof is really the central point here. Maybe I can write this more, more concretely. It, it's equivalent to prove that for any X of S smooth, then I just write this sequence for, for X maybe, uh, no, I think it's okay. Uh, then I can write X mod X, X minus X Z. So May this I is just the, no, let me, I feel I just finished. So the map that you will get from X mod X minus C to X C plus is a weak A1 equivalence. So an isomorphism in H star A1 of S. Yes? Yeah, yeah, sorry to interrupt. I think you mean homotopy cofiber sequence. Uh, so the square is Homotopy co Cartesian? Yes. Okay, sorry. It would be so, co fiber. Yeah, sorry. So this okay. is because I, I'm, I'm so used to a stable world. <laughs> okay. Is it okay? Is, oh, uh, is this one? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Co fiber sequence, of course. I, I want this to be. Uh, I want this to be right exact, absolutely, and, and this, this, uh, this, this fits well with this property. Okay, so geometrically, you are just proving this kind of thing here. Uh, of course, this, this theorem is, is uh, very related to the one of the main problem of the uh, higher true group, which is proving the localization on exact, exact sequence for higher true groups. So it's not known, uh, uh, comment. It's not known for uh, uh, the category DM effective of S, except if the closed immersion I admits a smooth retraction, or there are other, other possibility you can, if you restrict to regular schemes over of characteristic zero, it works also. But the general case is unknown at the moment. 
Okay, so it's really the a central point of, uh, of the field. Okay. Okay, so uh, now to go uh, to go to the six functor formalism, there's no there's no six functor formalism unstably. <clears throat> You'll have a trace of it, but uh, not the full, the full one. And so now we, I want to go to the stable homotopy category. So I will give a quick definition uh, uh, using still, he's still using this uh, language of infinity categories. So recall that we have se several spheres. In so now we work in this pointed a1 okay so we had p1 pointed by infinity and as Kirsten recall this is isomorphic to s1 smash gm pointed by one so these are the two spheres that that have also appeared to define the dead twist we have also other models of CL sphere but i won't i, I won't use them so the the, the trick is that we in some sense, we want to invert both uh, both sphere S1 and GM. So we will take a spectrum with respect to P1. So for this, we introduce the omega P, the P1 loop space, space X, which is just uh, internal arm P1 X for X appointed space. Each time I use, I, I, I write internal home, they should be derived if you work within, with uh, uh, model categories and so on, but I'm, I'm a bit sloppy here. And now you can define if you follow the definition of Robalo, you can take the following definition for the stable hair one homotopy category, S H. Now I don't, I don't put an A1 anymore of S, the stable one homotopic of category of P1 spectrum is the co-limit of the following diagram of infinity categories. So you take H1 of S, apply this omega P1, and you, you apply it indefinitely in this direction, and so on. Okay, so in some sense, the object of SH of S are uh, uh, you, you make you make objects objects become infinitely maybe I should say, I can say infinitely P one divisible in some sense. Okay, so this is a beautiful definition call limit into the category of presentable maybe pre monoidal presentable infinity category okay so but I, i'll give a, a, a concrete uh, i'm not Frederick, i'm really confused here you if call limit if you go to the right and it stops you're not doing anything maybe you mean limit is it limit maybe I'm, i don't know i mean or do you have the arrows going in the infinite in the other direction i'm not sure i'm not an infinity guy no you, you mean limit, limit. Yeah, sorry okay. okay thanks homotopy limits of category but uh, let, let me give a concrete uh, concrete meaning of this concrete construction concrete model For this, so if you compute this, this uh, the, the object in this uh, uh, homotopy limit, then what you get is sequences of objects in S H of S, which are called uh, here, yeah, okay, P one spectra. So as in the classical case, you will get sequences of spaces it's a pointed space with an isomorphism from xn and omega p1 xn plus one so weak a1 equivalence of spaces okay 
So this really corresponds to what we should call omega p1, uh, omega, yeah, omega spectra, omega p1 spectra. Okay. And usually, this map here corresponds to P1 smash Xn goes to Xn plus 1. Okay. And, and the classical model, you just, uh, you just ask for the, the existence of this suspension map here. And now you should, uh, if you know classical spectra, you should be back in, in classical term. Okay, so I have given the concrete model. Now let's let's state the universal formula, which is absolutely not trivial. Universal property, sorry, of S H of S. It's the say presentable. Maybe I sh should not put this monoidal infinity category. Universal with the functor sigma infinity from H A one H star A one S to S H of S such that the infinite suspension of P one is invertible. So for so when I consider then uh, the monodal structure on spectra, I just use tensor product because uh, spectra are closer to homology than uh, so tensor and vertical. But the, the usual convention is to take smash product, but anyway. Okay, so just a remark. So uh, as I said, we have inverted two sphere when we have inverted only P1. So it, it, it's it's, uh, it's uh, you can see it formally here, but you can also look at S one spectra, and then uh, you will factor this map here. So S one spectra, I will denote it S H F. Okay, so you invert only you apply the construction the construction above, but to S1, which is the simply short sphere, so I should, okay. And then it factors through this category and it's uh, useful uh, theoretically, um, but, but now it's also useful for uh, what I have. So I had defined this category here. So it was only for regular schemes, but you can enlarge it. So by using this uh, gamma, this uh, functor ad adding transfers, you can define something like this. So it's, it's uh, let me write this gamma per star composed with abelianization. So to a simply show of a sheaf, it will associate first a complex of abelian groups and then it add transfers. Okay, and now I want to insist that if we do the same construction of P1 spectrum, but for this category, we obtain the non-effective category of motives and it fits into this diagram here. Okay, so it's just two. Okay, now I'm back and I'm on good, good foot to state the main theorem so of Ayub and Vajewski. So now, I have all the definition to state this theorem. So it was stated by Vyvesky, who gave uh, sketchy notes, and it was completely proved by Ayub in his PhD thesis. So it says basically the following for any F separated of finite type, morphism of schemes, so F from T to S. There exists a pair, a pair of a joint functor, so F low shriek from SH of T, SH of S, and F upper shriek, so the exceptional functor. 
such that which are characterized by the property so f freak f freak is compatible with composition so and so i, I don't give precise account here it's a bit formal it's a so so called co cycle condition but also if f is proper uh f lower shriek relates to the basic function so it's f lower star defined previously and if f is smooth we'll have f lower f sorry f lower shriek again is isomorphic to f lower sharp but here you have to add something you have the tom space tensor product where t of f is the tangent bundle and tom of tf is the stable tom space so it's infinite suspension of the space t of f mod by tf the, the open complement isn't it frederick isn't that backwards it's the f lower sharp is the, you have to put a tom space of the minus tf there don't you no it's uh, the correct way like that i think or no no the upper shriek is the upper star composed with the tom space isn't it yeah on the left yeah i'm pretty sure okay <laughs> Okay, so so I have to add that term of TF is tensor invertible in the stable category in that's why, you, that's why you have to pass the stable category. T and uh, exactly that's a virtue of passing to the you invert only P1, but but by by this procedure you invert all the term spaces and uh, term minus tf is the tensor inverse sorry to have mismatch the conventions okay the good thing is that these properties determine the f lower shriek so there are some infinity categorical issue but i i won't enter into this uh, this, this details here um, oh i have plenty of time <laughs> I've, I've gone faster than, than I expected. But okay, so, and uh, I have to take an, an, another blackboard, sorry. Uh, and you have also the so called Bestian formula. So maybe if you have not seen that, I will state it because I have more time. So if you have a, a pullback square, in the category of scheme, so, so let's do it proper. Partition F G Q. Then you have uh, the upper star F lower shriek, and you assume that F is fine uh, se separated of finite type. P uh, upper star f lower shriek is isomorphic so these isomorphism are canonical as, as much as they can <clears throat> it's a isomorphic to g lower shriek q upper star and likewise so these these are all left adjoints so now if you have an isomorphism of left adjoints we will have isomorphism of right adjoints so you have a dual isomorphism and there is also a very important formula, the projection, the projection formula, which so you take f's uh, f separated of finite type as before, and this time it says that uh, f lower shriek e tensor f upper star of f is canonical to f lower shriek of e 
and so on. Okay. So the funny thing is that you see that uh, you you have you are formulated in terms of this uh, category of coefficients properties that are known for cohomology theory. So this 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 this, this uh, property is known for transfers and, for example, char groups. And this one also, it's also called the projection formula for the Chow group or in cohomology. So you have translated all these uh, properties of cohomology theory in terms of uh, 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 the objects of a category of coefficients. Okay. So in brief, the, the, so I mentioned that Wojewski had extended the, the, the realm of motivic complexes, but now the category SH with schemes vary answers to answer a, a kind of a, a generalized Bellinson formalism. In the sense that uh, uh, now this SH, this category SH, so it's triangulated. So I've not said that, but when you invert P, P1, you also invert S1 and you, you obtain a, a stable infinity category, which means that the associated homotopy category is triangulated. So the SH, uh, the category SH of S is a triangulated category and it's equipped with uh, uh, the, the, the six functors formalism of, Gro of a formalism of Grothendieck. That is the, the formalism that you, you, you get for sheaves, classical sheaves on the analytical, analytical varieties, for example, but also elliptic sheaves. Okay. For this category SH, you have good realization functor in, for example, in elliptic uh, elliptic category. You know, you know, you know much. Also, you have also this uh, this uh, very ent enthusiastic program to compute the homotopy sheaves inside this stable homotopy category that uh, 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 Kirsten has uh, has mentioned in her talk. So, to finish the talk, I want to go now to the so the, the, the integral category, SH category, is very mysterious at the moment, or it's mysterious, but it's also very exciting. Here you have many phenomena, quadratic form, and so on. Uh, uh, but with rational coefficients, now we know much more about this stable homotopy category, and it will allow me to connect this with uh, motivic complexes. So last part, I will talk about the rational part. Okay, so it take S a scheme as, as before on the tier and finite dimensional. Then I can look at this triangulated category and I can always take its rational part. So there are several formal, formal ways to do that. Either you can just, you take the OM, so you take the homotopy category and you, you, you tensor all the OM with Q and it gives you a category and you can check it's still triangulated. Or you can do in a more topological way and you invert a, a move spectra as, as a, or as Mark has said. So you invert maps in, in stable homotopy category and use localization theory. Anyway, you get a good uh, triangulated category. And the first thing is that it can be decomposed into two parts. So there is the plus part and it's a product with a so-called minus part. So the plus part is so that, so you, so you recall now that Kirsten has described the stable homotopy group source here and it's given by, uh, if you consider the GM grading by as v, by this milnor k theory of, of, of fields. And in this case, in these groups, you have, a, you have a several elements. Notably, you have the algebraic OPF map. So the plus part is characterized by the fact that the OPF map, the algebraic OPF map, acts by zero. It's also characterized by the fact that the map epsilon, which appears also in the presentation of milnor is uh, minus one. And the plus part is, uh, the minus part is characterized by the fact that eta is invertible. So the is invertible and epsilon acts by plus one. 
convol category. The good thing is that this, this category decomposed like that for any schemes, actually. And this here is isomorphic to the M effective of S Q, the, uh, not effective, sorry, the stable category. So at least for S regular. Or, but uh, actually, with a good definition of this category of, uh, of, of multiple complexes of rational coefficients, you can extend this and you can uh, you have it for all schemes. Actually, if you really want to use shift width transfers, you can do a little bit more. You can use any normal or even geometrically uniform scheme. <clears throat> and the important thing here is that this part also is uh, completely determined. So maybe I should write as zero for you have a scheme so it's over z you can always take the, the part which uh, of points which are of characteristic zero and here this part is something like the <coughs> modules over the v chief so this is this represents over s0 and ramified Chief. So this minus part here is completely connected with a quadratic fault. Okay. So for non-regular, you have to be slightly more careful. So now concretely, what does it mean on, on the home groups? So let so we you can compute the cohomotopy groups by an i of s, say again s regular to simplify. So these are just the map so in the stable homotopy category between say sphere spectrum and here you take so s uh, and minus i so i said i didn't smash okay. gm to the i okay and you compute this in sh of sq then it will be isomorphic to two parts. For the plus part, what you have is the credit part for the, say, gamma filtration. Let me check. Every i of k to i minus n of s. So it's k theory, algebraic k theory of s, regular scheme in degree 2i minus n, and you take the graded part for the gamma filtration, you can take also the graded part for the topological filtration, it will give the same answer. The gamma filtrations refer to the lambda structure that you have on higher K theory, which is formally uh, more comfortable to work with, so this is why we take it. It's also the Adams graded part. And the interesting thing is that you have a complement which corresponds to the minus part, and here, this is H uh, N minus I Niznevich of this scheme S0 with coefficient in this unramified chief. Okay. So, okay, maybe if, if I'm uh, If you want more uh, 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 um, more con concrete description, you take E to be a field, then the cohomotopy of a field E with Q coefficients will be so same things. Let me write motivic cohomotopy H and I motivic of E Q. And here you will have W of E of q if n equal i and zero otherwise. Okay, so we I, I'm saying that just to 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 make my answer to Kirsten more concrete. So you see, uh, Bellins and Soule conjecture tells you that there's no cohomology if n is negative here, but there will always be a uh, 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 cohomotopy if n is negative because you can take i positive and there will always be this uh, uh, v part here. Okay, uh, it's zero also. So this group is also zero if E is a field of characteristic P. This is because so 
this, a part of uh, the answer why these, 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 these things work well is that uh, uh, the V ring is all two torsion if, uh, if uh, field E here is uh, of characteristic P. So when tensoring with Q, we are killing a lot of information, but still it remains this uh, uh, quadratic information, for example, if we work with uh, schemes of characteristic zero. So uh, uh, all this picture uh, has been obtained by the, the, a long series of effort and many mathematicians, but uh, maybe if you want, uh, yeah, okay, so, so the last the, the, the last point was take was uh, all this was proved by in a, in a recent paper by Jean Fazel, Zujin, and Adilkan and myself. So if you want to see to see this, but the, the, the first steps were, were taken by uh, by Mark, uh, Ivan, uh, Ivan Panin, and uh, and. Uh, Ananieski, and there was also an input by Garconchan, and also input by, by uh, Morel, and, and so on. Okay. But still, it's a complete computation for rational coefficients. If there's no questions, so I, I just want to finish with uh, uh, some uh, a word about the six functor formalism. So it's a kind of a uh, accomplishment of the six functor formalism. It's the Grotendieck. Verdier duality that you obtain very generally out. So the six functor formalism was uh, uh, invented by Grothendieck in particular to to be up, to be able to get this uh, these kinds of duality statements as, as one knows. So you can see that in his ICM uh, uh, conference uh, in fifty eight, I think, when he was starting about thinking about uh, shared duality. So it's a kind of shared duality, but in a very, very gen high generality. So here you take F from T to S, uh, separated of finite type, such that S is regular. And the assertion is that if you, if, uh, let me take X rather than T because it will be pretty, then you can, Define dx to be the f upper shriek of a constant object. So let me write this one as this leaves in sh. So I take rational coefficients. Statement. Okay. And say so what this is isomorphic to the tom space of a cotangent complex of f if. Uh, X is regular. But what I'm saying will work for X single. Then what you have, if you, if you, if you take E to be a compact object of SH of S, which means that um, E to dot commutes with direct sums. infinite direct sum. So this is in the language of, of this functor formalism, this is called constructible in reference to what we have for uh, elliptic sheaves. Then you can define the dual, the weak dual of E as being internal arm of E with coefficient in dx. And the statement of grotendieck verdier duality says that dx is a dualizing complex. So it means that the map E is isomorphic to its B-dual. Okay. Is an iso, so a stable weak A1 equivalence. SH or SQ. <clears throat> okay, so you, you, you get out of this uh, wall machinery a, a kind of very strong duality uh, statement that you can, uh, after that, uh, uh, Do you, uh, apply to cohomology and get more concrete form. Okay, so this this maybe I should say that this Grothendieck Verdier duality is true here in this generality for rational coefficients, but it was also proved by uh, Joseph Ayub in his PhD 
when s is uh, with integral coefficients, when s is uh, 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 of characteristic zero. And there are several generalizations. Cool. Okay, so I think I, I, I finished my talk. I've gone much faster than last time, so maybe we can stop here and give give some time for questions. Yes, yes, that's perfect. So thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, let's give uh, Frederick some applause for his beautiful lecture. So we have uh, ample time for questions. Are there some more than already have been posted in the chat? What does constructible mean other than compact? So uh, usually what you take as a definition is you take uh, SH of index X, index C is the subcategory generated by uh, generated by all uh, uh, sigma infinity x plus with some twist n and uh, finite uh, colleagues. Okay, so the, this stable homotopy category is stable by infinite sums. And you, of course, you won't have duality results for, for these infinite sums. So you want something which, uh, which is smaller. And the good generality is to take uh, uh, only the object which comes from x over s smooth. Okay, so you take all the objects which are finite uh, obtained by by taking extension and finite sums and suspension of these objects here. Maybe I should add some i. Okay, and and uh, from it's very meaningful from the uh, motivic point of view because it corresponds to. So what Vygotsky called geometrical motifs. It's so um, when you try to make this definition for after some realization in, in a category of coefficients, what you will get is the coefficient of geometric origin. Not exactly what people call, uh, uh, for example, in Eladic co cohomology or in etal shift. It's not exactly, uh, the analog of this is not exactly the category of bonded complexes with constructible commodity. It's really objects of or coefficients of geometric origin. And it's a quite a complicated notion, mysterious element. But for, for motives, it's work fine. And it's equivalent to compact. And I should say also that this, this, uh, this uh, compact equal constructible, it reminds, uh, should remind you about the fact that perfect complexes in the category of OX modules are exactly the compact object with this beautiful theorem of Thomas. So, yeah, okay. It's a natural notion of finiteness, to be brief. Are there any further questions? Uh, can I ask a, a very general one? Um, so yesterday we were working with just um, set valued uh, pre sheaves, like initially, right? Um, and this kind of gave us a category that we could, you know, do some kind of homotopy with algebraic geometry. Um, so I, I guess for me, and I, I mentioned this yesterday, I, I'm not a homotopy theorist. So in infinity categories to me, when they come up, we're always a little bit like, we're always a little bit spooky. What do they like bias here? Like what by like taking, you know, she's valued in spaces, like how does that improve our theory? Like, like why would I think to do that or go that route, I guess? So uh, the answer is that, uh, 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 first of all, you get the, homotopy category so uh, um, uh, so unstably you get a, a, a category which is closer to classical topology i mean uh, um, uh, uh, and you have access to invariants such as uh, pi one which are uh, a very important topological invariant mm -hmm. a second answer which is my which might be uh, more Comological is that you get more comology theory if you if you start with uh, uh, simply short sets, and you get these kinds of extraordinary comology if you 
such as uh, cobordism or k theory. Okay. So k theory, for example, cannot be constructed as a, a, a category of complexes of shifts with transfers. It's an extraordinary cohomology theory. Mm -hmm. And in topology, to get this, this cohomology, you really need to, 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 to make uh, consider spectra, S1 spectra with respect to simply show set. So you get more more theory. Okay. Rationally, this simplifies a bit, this uh, simplifies a lot and uh, there's no difference now, but it's a, it's a kind of long story. But with integral coefficients, it's really different. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Any further questions? I guess I also had one that was um, uh, kind of related to the general scheme constructions here. Um, I, I noticed we haven't really said the word Mackie functor because we're not really working with that category of correspondences, but a lot of the theory seems set up in somewhat of a similar way. And the six functor formalism seems to be giving us that sort of uh, I, I forgot the name of the condition on it, but it, it, it seems to be giving us uh, this sort of like Mackie functor condition with the case that we're working with here. And so the thing I was kind of curious about was like how much of that intuition from like um, equivariant homotopy theory ports over like, you know, is there a good theory of like norms of like an infinity ring spectra structured over oh, so. this category of correspondences? Et cetera, so there, et there, there are several answers to this. So First point of view is that if you use transfers and things like that and shifts uh, and, and, uh, and shifts with transfers, uh, homotopy shifts with transfers by Vyvesky, they relate to a, a notion which is not so well known of cycle modules, which is completely, uh, uh, which is a generalization of, of Mackey functor where you, so instead of having uh, uh, transfers, uh, restriction and co-restriction, you add another direction, which is residues, you add residues operators like or by that. So, and, and uh, uh, what you can prove is that shift with transfers are completely related to with this cycle of modules. So in some sense, there are some generalized Mackey functors. Um, okay, and now uh, the stable homotopy category is actually closer to uh, uh, the equivalent stable homotopy the stable homotopy category of schemes is actually closer to the stable homotopy category of equivalence uh, spaces because, uh, for example, when you consider SH over a field such as air or even a number field, then the category is really connected with the category of, of uh, with the equivalent category of space with uh, uh, an action of a Galois group of the base fields. And fin finally, for norm maps, you want to come to, to look at this at a, a, a beautiful paper by uh, Marco Iwa and, uh, 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 and, uh, um, Paul and Tom Bachman, in the other way, uh, uh, where they define, they study multiplicative transfer. It's not exactly transfers for Mackie from Tor, but just, uh, just to advertise. So, okay, That's, is that answering your question? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I was also curious uh, for computing stuff with motives, like is there, or with, with the motives that we just defined, like is there a, a good notion of slice filtration and slice spectral sequence, like are those computations that go through here as well? So this, uh, well, so Oliver knows, knows that better and, and Mark also knows that big, better than me, but the slice filtration is first important in the stable homotopy category because it gives a filtration which allows first to relate SH with DM. For example, the zero slide of the sphere spectrum over the field is, is known to be isomorphic to the uh, islander maclean motivic spectrum, which represents motivic cohomology. Uh, but it still exists on, on DM. I don't know exactly what the results are, uh, have, have, what you have, what one can prove with a slight filtration on DM, but maybe Oliver or something too. Say about that. For me, it's more meaningful on the stable homotopy category, and, and it has plenty of applications. Okay. Are there some more questions? I have a slightly vague question, but this this DM, 
the category of mod is it, is it close to the category of motifs that Grotenic had in mind? So does it come with a collection of Ah, I should have, yeah. So yeah. I've, I've hidden all this picture, this beautiful Mathieu picture. So uh, uh, I've not said that, but on, or I've used that on DM of K, you have a T structure, the homotopy T structure, which just comes from the Dirac category of series transfers, and you, you, you can use this to prove a lot of things. But it's expected that you have another T structure. Which is definitely not the homotopy T structure, which is the motivic T uh, structure, whose whose heart is the the, 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 the the category of mixed motifs, the abelian category of mixed motifs, which is uh, which contains the category of pure motifs as uh, as a full subcategory, and pure motifs are supposed to be the simple object in this abelian category. Okay. So this picture is beautiful. You have um, even more things to say about the decomposition in this category and so on. It's uh, there are many, many papers on this. Maybe the book of uh, Yves André and, and also uh, proceedings by Hansen, many, many, many things. Also about, uh, I should say that the Bainson conjecture is known so, uh, uh, as I stated, for for some fields, so it's known for uh, just the, just the one I stated about the, the complex. It's known for number fields and uh, uh, finite fields and function fields of curves of the finite fields. And uh, Mark Levin has proved that you can define this uh, motivity structure if you restrict to motifs over these kinds of fields, which which comes only from uh, say finite extension or some twists, so the artintate motifs. So we have a trace of, uh, of this, uh, this uh, motivity structure, if you restrict to these motifs. We can also restrict to the so-called one motif, so you can, you can look at the literature. So it's not hopeless to, to say something on this, but definitely the obstruction, the number one obstruction is this vanishing uh, conjecture. Actually, Mark proved that uh, existence of a motivity structure on these art intent motifs is equivalent to uh, the Bellinson Soule conjecture. So that settled the matter. Yeah. Okay, as, as we see, there's uh, a lot left to do. And many conjectures are still there to, to resolve. So if there are no further questions, I would say we, we thank uh, Frederick again for his beautiful lectures. And don't forget, in about uh, 15 minutes, um, there's a problem and discussion session where experts will be present and where you can ask uh, further questions. And in the meantime, you can stroll around in Sokoko. But uh, yeah, let's thank Frederick again. <laughs>